Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the great pleasure of introducing an esteemed UT engineering alumnus, a man who has shown great dedication to the Cockrell School and has gone above and beyond in support of our students. Tonight's commencement speaker, Gary Thomas. Gary is the Chief Operating Officer for EOG Resources, Inc., one of the largest crude oil and natural gas companies in the U.S. EOG is currently the biggest oil producer in Texas and the largest onshore oil producer in the continental U.S. Gary has been with EOG since 1978 and was promoted to his current position in 2011. In his leadership role, he is responsible for the profitability and growth of exploration and production activities across all of the company's operating areas. Gary holds a bachelor's degree in petroleum engineering from the Cockrell School and a master's degree in engineering management from the University of Tulsa. He is a passionate supporter of the University of Texas and our school, and he remains actively involved as a member of the External Advisory Council for the Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineering. As one of his many contributions to the Cockrell School, Gary led the effort to raise significant philanthropic funds to renovate the Ben H. Cottle Student Learning Center Excellence Center. Because of Gary's efforts, engineering students now have a large, modern space for studying, as well as a new computer lab and lounge. As a veteran of the energy industry, Gary also enjoys sharing his knowledge with those following in his footsteps. He has become well known for providing excellent career guidance to our students and offering industry insights to our faculty. We would like to thank Gary for his generous service to the Cockrell School and his continued belief in our faculty and students. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gary Thomas. Good evening. Congratulations, graduates of the University of Texas Cockrell School of Engineering, class of 2014. We're so proud of you. And congratulations and thanks to parents, faculty and staff, family and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to celebrate this important occasion with you. Although I'm a graduate of the University of Texas, I never attended my own graduation ceremony I was so eager to report to my first official job that I left campus immediately after my last final. That's why being here today is also special to me. Thank you, Dean Wood, for your gracious introduction, and a special thanks for bringing me back, back here. It's always a thrill to be on the campus of UT. In 1972, when I graduated, a huge political scandal called Watergate was unfolding in Washington, and the U.S. had resumed bombing Hanoi during the Vietnam War. The average cost of a new house was $27,500. The average American annual income was $11,800. Gasoline was 55 cents a gallon, and a new Ford Mustang, since I'm a Ford enthusiast and collector, cost less than $3,000. Truly, a lot has changed since 1972, but the fundamentals, the basics, remain the same. That is why I love the UT mantra, what starts here changes the world. Whether you are a graduating engineer today or you graduated 42 years ago, as I did, the phrase, what starts here changes the world, describes the foundation of learning provided by our education. Here at UT, we learn to think, to focus, harness our strength, and to team with others. We are problem solvers, equipped with the tools to address any challenge. We look forward to analyzing problems and offering solutions that may have far-reaching impact. In the last few years, that's exactly what's happened in the U.S. oil and gas industry. UT grads, with their peers from top schools across the, across the country, have stepped up to lead a quiet but powerful economic revolution, collaborating with professionals at independent, agile oil and gas companies such as EOG, engineers are fueling the shale revolution. 
The shell revolution is big, very big. It represents a renaissance in domestic energy, which is strengthening the economic foundation of our nation. For those of you entering the workforce, it is a change agent in most industries. As we speak, this shale revolution is being played out in fields like the South Texas Eagleford, North Dakota Bakken, Appalachia Marcellus, Texas Louisiana Haynesville, West Texas New Mexico Permian Basin. You may have heard some of these, but they're not exactly household names, are they? Perhaps they should be because the quality and quantity of hydrocarbons produced in this shale revolution is nothing short of phenomenal. For the first time since 1970, the U.S. has reversed a steep 40-year decline and is now growing oil and gas production. Currently, our country is producing over 8 million barrels of oil per day, the highest production level since 1988. This makes the U.S. less dependent on imports from foreign countries. Also, North America now has a 100-plus year supply of natural gas, the cleanest, most efficient, and cost-effective fuel. The cost savings to U.S. households has been tremendous. The Shell Revolution is providing the U.S. with a powerful, unique cost advantage from fuel to feedstocks to furnished, finished uh, products. U.S. manufacturing is more competitive now than it has been in decades. The country's dependence on foreign imports is greatly diminished, and we are paying less at the gas pump than most countries. Never has domestic energy been more robust. Never have there been so many growth opportunities on different fronts. Never has the technical innovation of engineers been valued more than it is today. This revolution did not take place overnight. When I graduated from UT with a petroleum engineering degree, this new energy source called shale rock was not a good thing. It caused all kinds of headaches in the drilling and completion of wells. Shales are the source beds where the hydrocarbons are generated. In the past, they were considered barriers or seals for the conventional oil and gas reservoirs. In those days, we tried to avoid shale rock as best we could. Exploration and production rocked along in the U.S. with production declining from the 70s through the 1990s. And by the late 1990s, EOG was running out of conventional oil opportunities. We needed new, large plays with substantial reserves. Even though we have many of the best geoscientists in the business, we had reached a stalemate. We could not grow production. So we looked around for ways we could grow. What options were out there that we could take advantage of? We were cautiously optimistic that perhaps horizontal drilling in shale rock could make a difference. We also knew if we didn't try, we would never succeed and our company might not survive. EOG began experimenting in all phases of horizontal drilling, completion, and production of shale rock in the Fort Worth Barnett, which primarily produced natural gas. It worked, and how well it worked. Today, shale gas development continues to expand across the U.S. EOG then moved into oil shale, that same rock we had once avoided like the plague, we thought we could now find ways to produce oil from this exceptionally tight rock. Talk about trial and error and persistence. Experimentation and persistence characterized EOG's developments of the North Dakota Bakken, followed, followed by horizontal oil developments in the Barnett Combo, Eagleford, and Permian Basin. During this transition period, the tables turned. The shale rock was easy to find compared to conventional reservoirs, but extracting hydrocarbons was difficult and expensive. All at once, engineers became front and center. Our engineers were challenged to find 
economical and eco-friendly ways to extract oil and gas from this brittle, super tight shale rock. The combined acumen of engineers and geoscientists is and will continue to be indispensable to the shale revolution. And yes, today, EOG is the largest onshore producer in the lower 48. We take our responsibility towards safety and the environment very, very seriously. After each of our wells is drilled, a straightforward process called hydraulic fracturing, commonly known as fracking, takes place. In his book entitled The Boom, Russell Gold describes it this way. You drill a well straight down several thousand feet and then gradually turn the well bore until it runs horizontally through the shale, again for several thousand feet. Then you isolate a section of the rock and inject water, sand, and household chemicals under high pressure. This makes the rock fracture, hence the name fracking. The sand stays behind to prop open the new network of fractures. The oil and gas flow out. Hydraulic fracturing technology has been in use since 1947 and has proved to be the key to the shale revolution. Some people ask me, why don't you retire? Because mentoring EOG's talented and focused young leaders is my passion. Seeing them work in teams to accomplish goals I never thought possible is incredibly rewarding to me. I am thrilled with the young engineers we've hired right off of college in recent years. I am very impressed with their work ethic, their commitment, and their initiative. Our industry is in the middle of an unconventional transformation. Therefore, our thinking needs to be unconventional too. And those of us who've been in the industry for 40 years may have some preconceived ideas, but we have no time for the mindset. That's the way we've always done it. Our young engineers come in, ask questions, make suggestions that help guide us toward unconventional solutions. Today's engineers have a great deal of opportunity in oil and gas, as well as other industries. You can look forward to moving quickly into leadership roles. When the baby boomers retire, there'll be a huge void in engineering manpower because few engineers joined the industry during the downturns of the 1980s and 1990s. It's not gonna be easy, but that void is being filled with eager, highly educated and creative engineers. You will need to quickly gain the experience, knowledge and leadership skills to develop strategy in a changing business environment. You will also need to take the initiative and find capable and caring mentors, many of whom will soon be retiring. I also encourage our engineers to bite the bullet and get some field experience. As young engineers in our first jobs, several of us were sent to work on the rigs with roughnecks and roustabout crews. We learned the basics from the ground up, literally. That early field experience became invaluable when we started giving directions to those working for us in the field and in the office. While it might not appeal to everyone, we have men and women who are eagerly moving through the field phase of their career. In fact, one of our young female engineers just set a new drilling record. She and her drill team drilled a 13,500 foot horizontal well in 3.17 days. That is amazing. In my early career, a vertical well straight up and down to that depth, which is more simpler to drill than a horizontal well, would have taken us 30 to 40 days, at least 10 times as long. Another young engineer enjoyed his field experience so much that after a stint in the office, he asked to be transferred back to field operations. He gained so much valuable knowledge and experience that we recently promoted him to division drilling manager. We at EOG have identified and captured a huge number of wells we want to drill over the next several decades. What we need are better, faster, simpler solutions to develop our assets more quickly and efficiently. Isn't that music to any engineer's ear? 
There are many moving parts in today's industry. Business is 24-7 and moving at a fast pace. Quick answers are provided in part by efficient IT systems. Business is more complex and utilizes sophisticated tools which are continually being developed. And seeking solutions is a highly integrated process with all disciplines interacting. The new dynamics of the global economy are engineering tools and techniques for constant change. So we must remain innovative and flexible. Nimble is the term we use at EOG. I constantly remind myself it is good to be pleased, but never to be satisfied. In industry, if you're not moving ahead, you're falling behind. We're continually learning and improving, and we engineers must be lifelong learners. It is exciting to be an engineer today. Low energy prices brought about by the Shell Revolution have created an industry renaissance in the U.S. This is causing new demand for power generation, chemical plants, and many manufacturing industries, all requiring the ingenuity and discipline of engineers. There is no doubt in my mind that those of you graduating from UT's Cockrell School of Engineering will continue to lead the way in your chosen field. You will give new meaning to the phrase, what starts here changes the world. Again, congratulations, graduates, and good luck in your careers. Good works lead our lives. Good works lead our lives. Now go out and rebuild America. Thank you.